Hi, I'm Joshua Long and I'm a chef in the Royal Navy, currently serving on HMS Queen Elizabeth and I'm based in Portsmouth. Right, so I'm Nathan, um, I'm Josh's brother, and I'm the one behind the creation of this documentary about Josh's life. It's kind of, yeah. So, what do you want this documentary to be about? <laughs> what do you want it to be about? Well, it's all about me, isn't it? It is about you, but like, what do you want it to show? It's not just about you. What I wanted to show? Yeah. Just me and the area. But do you not want it to show like our bond as well? That's mm -hmm. why I'm making it to show because I've spent a room with you. Spent I've shared a room with you for sixteen years. Like I feel like I know you the most out of anyone else, and that's why I kind of wanted to tell this story to show what you were like. I'll show you a photo of what you were like before. Like I think it should show how you turned from this. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? It's class, though. Isn't it? Class. It's a bit. You're a bit different now, like. Yeah. And then turning to that, they say that's more class. Mm -hmm. Why is that more class? What would you rather show someone in the street? <laughs> that one, no. That one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would I. That's what I mean. Like you've definitely changed from that. You still have your your traits, but. You've changed a lot. This is a film about my brother and how he's changed since he left home and joined the Royal Navy four and a half years ago. From being so close with him for the first 17 years of my life to not seeing him for most of the year meant I could really see his personality changing each time he came home. Last year, because I was living in Southampton for university, I went to visit Joshua for the first time in Portsmouth when his ship was returning home from being at sea. This was the day that I realised there was a story to tell here and I had to be the one to tell it. I've been filming for this documentary for the last few months now, starting in Portsmouth, then in Southampton and most recently back home in Northern Ireland. I wanted to try and show as much of real life as possible. I've done this by filming people without them knowing. Hey, love, uh, talk to the airport, please. Press and record when the participants don't realise I've done so, and always having a camera on me or nearby and ready to go. I have, of course, run into several obstacles along the way, like not getting into Portsmouth Naval Base because they thought I was part of the BBC, invading people's privacy, causing them not wanting to continue filming with me. What do you mean? This is the first time I've filmed. <laughs> Go. Having the sign stop working halfway through a shoot, or simply having moments like this happen. What's that? That's my alarm for bed. <laughs> <laughs> no, is it? Yes, it is. At quarter to nine. Yes. <laughs> In the end, though, I think I've created the story that I wanted to tell. Okay, and whenever you're ready. Do you need to ask me the question? Hmm? I don't have to say it. Um, so, what do you do for the Royal Navy and what is the Royal Navy? So, the Royal Navy is basically like, it's kind of like the army but at sea, but it does a lot more than just fighting wars. It does humanitarian aid, fishery protection, drug smuggling, and in the Navy I'm a chef. I'm currently serving on HMS Queen Elizabeth. You're on our baby. Yeah. What are you making now, Josh? The so we feed up to 1,500 people when we're at sea, but if you're on another ship it could be anything from 40 people to 1,500 people. As a chef, um, we work 
pretty long hours. It's usually 12 hours on, 12 hours off. So you would start at half nine in the morning and finish at half nine at night. And then the other watch would come in and take over. As a chef, we also have secondary roles on board the ship. We uh, can be part of the first aid team and we can be part of the fire team as uh, part of the ship's standard sea emergency party. So if there's any casualties, we deal with that. Or if there's any fires, floods on board, we're first response to go and sort out anything that happens. So I've been in the Royal Navy four and a half years now. I joined back in 2016, but before I joined the Navy, I was kind of in a never ending circle where I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I dropped out of two different colleges and I was going from job to job and just living for the weekend really, having no real purpose. And what actually made you want to join? Like, what, what brought that about? I wanted to join the Navy because, well, one, I was interested in becoming a chef and I seen that the Royal Navy offered to train you to become a chef. And they also liked the idea of getting away and traveling and making a more of a career. Uh, did your family encourage you to join the Royal Navy? Like, what, what, were, they, what were their thoughts on you before the Royal Navy? Well, before I joined the Royal Navy, I was kind of a nightmare at home. They were kind of king on, on the aspect of me joining the, the Royal Navy and they supported me. Oh, it was just wonderful, really, 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 because Joshua probably didn't, couldn't really stick it very much. You know, when he went to do his, his GCSEs, he'd only give so much, he didn't give us all. Now you're done to do his A-levels, he only gives so much, he didn't give us all. So I sort of thought this is going to be Joshua. Sure didn't even do that. Sure he went to do the A-level course at... And he didn't do it. Belfast Met, he got through out. Yeah, so that's what I was saying, he didn't do it. That's what I'm saying, he didn't do it, he just wouldn't get do it. Yeah. He left Superdrug, he left McDonald's. But he didn't, he didn't leave, but he left Superdrug. Why didn't they leave the Navy? Why did he not leave the Navy? Yeah, in those 10 weeks. I think he got this stage in his life that he wanted to do something. And I think really when he goes down to it, he wasn't just only doing it for himself, he was doing it for me and your daddy. I think it was the first time. And I think because he was with a lot of people who were all the same character or all the same person that they wanted to achieve something as well. Being based in Portsmouth can make it quite difficult because we're away from fr friends and family but you cope with that very well because you've got loads of friends over here and we all work together and we all go out together. We're all one big family. So when you join the Royal Navy, you have to go through the initial training of 10 weeks. It's like a job interview to get into the fleet. At the start, you have to sh everyone has to shave their head bald and then you go in into HMS Rally in Plymouth and you undergo 10 weeks of training. The 10 weeks of joining the Royal Navy involved learning how to fire a weapon. It involved learning how to do drill, which was marching. It also involved how to focus on detail, so you had to have your bed exactly the same as everyone else, all uniform. Your kit had to be ironed to an A4 page. So at the beginning, day one, I hated it because I was used to having really long hair. I went from having really long hair to a bald head, which was a, a big shock for me. I hated the fact that I'd left all my friends behind and I didn't really know anyone, so I didn't know whether I was going to make new friends or not. So I was kind of scared about that part of it. I actually did message my mum on day two, saying that I wanted to come home because I didn't think it was for me. Why was that? Was it physically training, uh, like challenging, or was it 
mentally challenging? What was harder? It was more the mental challenging part of it because I, I wasn't used to that discipline. On the final week, week 10 of the initial training, you do a pass out parade where your families come over to watch you parade around the square and then perform an arm strut. It's probably one of the best moments I've had during my time in the Royal Navy because I was so relieved that I'd finally done it. I didn't think that I would ever complete it. I'd just been counting down the days and counting down the weeks to that final moment where you got to just throw the cap off and say, that's it, I've done it. I really am glad that I decided to make this documentary about my brother, as it has made me even more proud of who he has become and what he does. I've always loved hearing the stories of his time in the Navy as well, whether that's him being out at sea on the ship or just being based in Portsmouth or being in training. And now with this documentary, I'm able to share those stories with other people. And I hope Joshua knows that he continues to make me and the rest of the family proud. So Joshua, do you know the, the Royal Navy catchphrase? No idea what it is. Yes, you do. You always see it in adverts and stuff. Oh, made in Belfast. I was born in Belfast, but I was made in the Royal Navy. <laughs> <laughs> Guess where you see that? 